50,000 years ago, the first artist started to draw. He picked up some soft, porous rocks from the soil, colors, yellow and orange and brown and ochre. He drew on the wall of his cave, on the rock face. His materials were the earth and his canvas was the earth. He was the first artist. He was the master of the rock. Every work of art is a brand new creation. It is as if nobody has ever drawn before. It is that we have never drawn before. It's as if we've, if we've never handled a paintbrush before or a pencil or charcoal. Everything is new. We share with that first artist. We share with him or with her the impulse to do something, to celebrate or to create to celebrate the beauties of nature or to create patterns and to create harmonies in space and time. The artists of the Stone Age drew animals. That was their main inspiration. Their life was informed by animals. They enjoyed their beauty, they enjoyed their mystery, they enjoyed their games and the animals were an inspiration to them. What is it that motivated those artists of the Rock Age, of the Stone Age? What is it that moved them to create these pictures that come down to us with such incredible power, such beauty? Their inspiration was exactly the same as ours. They were motivated by the same impulse. That moves you, that moves me to create our pictures. The same impulse that drives and motivates a small child of two or three years old to make their pictures. It's a natural instinct for beauty and for celebration. They love the beauty of the colors. They love the beauty of the textures. And they love the beauty of the forms of the animals. And they celebrate that the movement and life and power of these animals. Some out animals are power animals and other animals are animals of beauty and grace. They love to paint the birds, they love to paint the buck and the deer, they paint the lions, they paint the elephants, they paint the crocodiles. In another part of the world, the American Indians have the belief that animals speak to us, they are messengers. They bring us messages, messages and that these, they call them medicine animals or totem animals. And all of us share that. We know that when we dream about anything anyway, when we dream, there's a message in the dream because it comes from our subconscious. But equally, we can get our messages directly from nature. If an animal moves into our surrounds, if a porcupine comes into our garden at night, and we go outside and sit down, shine a torch on them and contemplate their beauty and their magic. They are communicating to us the spirit of the porcupine and they are telling us their lesson. The lesson of the porcupine being that like the porcupine, we have nothing to fear. Like the porcupine, we are untouchable. So inside that armor of shock, spikes, quills. The porcupine is one of the gentlest of all animals. It has nothing to fear. It has no enemies. It can just live and love. That is what the message is when we encounter a porcupine. If we encounter another animal, like a hummingbird, the hummingbird is the animal that seeks for joy and for pleasure. Its hunt always is for the nectar and the sweetness. And the hummingbird tells us that we too should look onto the beautiful side of things, to find the nectar in nature. And the animals have other lessons, but all of them talk to us. An animal running on a rock 
runs beyond the end of the rock face, beyond the mouth of the cave. The space in which that animal exists extends over the valleys and to the next mountain ranges, over the entire continent and beyond the continent into the sky, beyond the clouds and the rainbows and into the infinities of space, stars and galaxies. And they also fill the other infinity, the infinity of consciousness, what is called universal subconscious mind. That is where they live and that is where they communicate directly to us. If we take the time to dwell upon an animal, if we take time to draw the animal, to paint the animal, and to ponder over the animal, to contemplate the animal, the entire experience is deepened. We feel the communion of the animal and the communion with the animal. It's a strange phenomenon that while we are painting and while we are drawing, we forget where we are. Jung and Freud and Western psychologists would agree with all this because the subconscious is where we get all our messages from. So if an animal that appears to us in a dream, it is an obvious and clear message. There is something going on, we might not be able to read the message, but we know that there is a message. The difference is with these earlier cultures, or its cultures which are closer to nature, is that they realize that the real animal brings the same message. An owl that comes into your life brings the same message as an, owl that comes, as an owl that comes to you in a dream. The message is exactly the same. It is up to us to decipher the message. History took art through many forms, movements we call them. But there is one form of art, one philosophy of art, that has never changed. From the first rock artist, from the first persons to pick up chalk, to pick up rocks and start making their marks, right through from ancient Greece, through the Romans, to the Renaissance, to the Baroque, and to the 19th century and the masters of Toulouse Lautrec, Degas, Gustave Klimt. It is the art which is based on the love of nature natural art. That movement has never stopped, it has never wavered, it has come right through. Once we started becoming more civilized and we lost our contact with nature itself, then we tended to focus more on people and their natural beauty, the natural form of the human being. But animals have always informed us and have always will inform us. Natural art is the art that will never die. There is only one artist. He is Mozart, he is Shakespeare, he is Titian, and he is you. Feel the connection. Be the master of the rock.